Yo ho ho! Here we are with graph transformations lesson number nine. This time we are looking at logs and exponentials. So there are six graph transformations in total that we have looked at. Hopefully you know all these by now. Here is a quick summary which I go into in the last lesson. But moving on to logs and exponentials. These transformations that we have just learned can also be applied to logarithmic and exponential graphs. As a quick recap then, what do these graphs look like? Well, your exponential, remember it's y equals some number to the power of x. When you graph it, it looks something like that. And your log graph always passes through the two points 0, 1 and 1, a. A just being the base. So if it was 5 to the power of x, it would pass through 1, 5. The inverse of that, your logarithmic function, y equals log base ax. Remember that's reflected in the line y equals x, and it looks something like that. Your log graph passes through the points 1, 0, and then a1. So if it was log base 7, it would pass through 7, 1. So that's your log graphs and your exponential graphs. Let's move on then to looking at some of the transformations with log graphs. So example one, here is the graph of y equals a to the power of x. First of all, find the value of a, and secondly, find sketch the graph of y equals a to the power of x minus 5. So looking at the log graph, we can see it passes through the point 0, 1, and it passes through the point 2, 9. And your log graph is in the form y equals some number to the power of x. So first of all, we want to find the value of a. Because we know it passes through the point 2, 9, and it's of the form y equals a to the power of x, what we can do is we can substitute in the x and the y, so we can sub in the 2 and the 9. So replacing uh, y with 9 and replacing the x with 2, we'd end up with 9 equals a squared. Or in other words, a squared is 9. And if a squared is 9, then a would equal 3. Really positive or negative 3, but it says in the question a is bigger than 0. So a must be 3. Therefore, the equation is y equals 3 to the power of x. Part B, sketch the graph of y equals a to the power of x minus 5. Well, this is where we're having to apply one of these transformations. If you look back to the question again, a to the power of x minus 5, which transformation would it be? Well, if you've got an x minus 5 inside the brackets, it's going to be this transformation here. So, looking at that then. We have y equals f of x plus or minus a. That is going to move the graph to the left or the right. Remember, a negative will move the graph in the positive direction and a positive in the negative direction. So because here we have y equals a to the power of x minus 5, the negative will move the graph to the right in the positive direction five places. So both of these key points that we have will move to the right five units. So instead of this point being here at uh, 0, 1, it'll be across at 5, 1. Instead of this point here being at 2, 9, it'll be across at 7, 9. And that is what the graph would look like if you draw it in. And that then is y equals a to the power of x minus 5. Let's look at a second example. This time, here's the graph of y equals a to the power of x plus b. Find the values for a and b. So again, we've got our equation y equals ax to the power of uh, a to the power of x plus b. This time, we know that this point zero two lies on the curve. This is on the line. We know x is the y, x zero is the x value, and two is the y value. So what we can do is we can substitute these values into the equation. So replace the y with two and replace the zero with x. The reason we're doing that is because if you have something to the power of zero, it just becomes one. Meaning then that a is going to disappear and we will be able to find out b. So in this case, b would be equal to one. We could have done this a different way as well because we know it's an exponential, an exponential always passes through the point zero, one. But this one here you can see passes through zero, two. So the graph has moved up one place. So what you could always do is think, right, well the b must be one because the graph has moved up one place. It's not going through zero, one, it's going through zero, two. 
Either way then, we know we'd have y equals a to the power of x plus 1. From there, we still want to find out this value of a, so how do you do that? Well, we know this point 39 also lies in the curve, so we can substitute in the 3 and the 9. Replace the y with 9, that's the y value, and replace the x with 3. We therefore have 9 equals a to the power of 3 plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides, and we've got 8 cubed is 8, meaning then that a is going to be 2. We're just taking the cube root. 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8. Find the values for a and b, so we know a is going to be 2, and b is going to be 1. Sometimes you might be asked to write down the equation, and if you were, then you would just say that was 2 to the power of x plus 1. But here it's just asking you for a and b. Let's look at one last example. Example 3, here's the graph of y equals log base a, x plus k. What are the values for a and k? So this time you need to be thinking about the points that your log graph passes through. So a log graph will always pass through the point 1, 0 and then a, 1. However, or saying that first of all, so we know the log graphs will always pass through those points. But this point here, this 1, 0, well, it's not passing through 1, 0. The graph has been shifted to the left for units. It's now passing through negative 3, 0. So a move in the negative direction means in the brackets here, when you've got bracket x plus or minus something, means you're going to have a positive inside the brackets. So therefore, the value of k must be positive 4. Meaning your equation then would be y equals log base a x plus 4. Remember the plus 4 would have moved the graph in the negative direction four places and it always passes through 1, 0. Okay, so we have moved that point. We now need to find the value of a, but if you think about it, your log graph always passes through the point a, 1. So it's going to be something 1. Here it's passing through 4, 1, but the value of a is not going to be 4 because the log graph has been shifted to the left four units. So what we need to think is, if the log graph moved back four units, where would it be going through? So imagine the graph moved back to the right four places. The point four one, if we shift that to the right four units, it will then be at eight one. And if it's passing through the point eight one, then it must be log base eight, meaning then the value of a is going to be eight. Therefore, find out the values of a and k. Well, a is then going to be 8, and k is going to be 4. And if you were asked for the equation again, we'd have y equals log base 8, x plus 4 inside the brackets. This example is a wee bit trickier. You need to think about what has happened to the graph, but think about these two points that it always passes through. Try these questions then for our logs and exponentials, applying the graph transformations. Let me know if you need a hand. Good luck.